In the movies, robots are powerful machines that can do things humans can only dream of. They are superior. But in the real world, even the best humanoid robots don't hold a candle to people. They're slow, going two to three kilometers per hour at most, and their huge heavy battery packs power them for only a few minutes at a time. But Michael Goldfarb, a Vanderbilt University professor, may have hit upon a way to make them better, stronger, faster. He's using rocket fuel, and he's demonstrating his superiority over battery power with a lifelike prosthetic arm that he and his graduate students built from scratch. So we can do a lot of work. Goldfarb uh, developed the arm at the behest of DARPA, the R&D arm of the U.S. Department of Defense. It's part of DARPA's ongoing revolutionizing prosthetics project aimed at developing a self-contained and self-powered human-like arm hardwired to the human nervous system. The agency hopes that the project, begun in 2005, will result in an artificial arm that will restore nearly all function to soldiers who lose their limbs on the battlefield. So how does it work? When a small amount of highly concentrated hydrogen peroxide used in the space industry as rocket propellant comes in contact with small grains of iridium, a catalyst also used for rockets, the reaction product is a burst of water vapor that has 200 times the volume of the propellant. Robotic prostheses currently on the market have only two joints, an elbow that bends and a hand joint that is essentially a pincher. Goldfarb's device has 21 joints that allow nine degrees of freedom. The joints that move in concert on a human hand, like the two closest to the tips of each of the fingers, also move in tandem on the mechanical replica. Each of the shiny metal actuators on the forearm is independently regulated by a cylinder located just above it. The cylinders contain custom-made pneumatic motor control packages featuring sensors called optical encoders. The optical encoders allow the arm's operator to precisely control the motion of the fingers in space. To control just how tightly the fingers grip an object, force sensors sit just below the arm's pneumatic muscles. And he's controlling uh, the force. In future versions, an entire day of arm movement will be fueled by a small canister of propellant stored on board. The cartridges will fit in the space just above the elbow, along with the batteries that will power the arm's control electronics, including sensors and processors. I envision them like uh, ink for an inkjet printer, where you would, I think they would reuse the cartridge, and, uh, and so you would get shipped a dozen cartridges, and when you're done, you ship the empty carcasses back, they refill them and ship them back to you. So fueling a prosthetic arm will be relatively easy. A more vexing problem is how to control it. Researchers at other universities involved in the revolutionizing prosthetics project are working to develop a reliable and robust interface between the human nervous system and machines like Goldfarb's artificial arm. For now, the prototype is controlled with an exoskeleton that a user straps onto his or her arm. Anytime you're trying to deal with objects, there's definitely a learning curve because you can't you can't feel what the arm feels. You don't have any kind of proprioceptive feedback for where your fingers are or how hard they're squeezing. So if, whenever you're trying to grab things, you really have to either, you know, get a good look at what you're doing or you just kind of have to guess, whenever you, if you, especially when your uh, vision is obscured by whatever it is you're trying to grab, like a Kleenex I have a lot of difficulty with because whenever the Kleenex is there, you lose sight of half the fingers, essentially. The difficulty in haptic feedback is that you need to get those signals back into the human. And as I mentioned right now, it's enough of a challenge to get the motor commands out of the human. The next step is to get sensory commands back into the human. So what's next for this rocket fuel powered arm? Oops. Of course we have no skin right now, and so <laughs> because we don't have skin, things like this can slip out. Skin's important for friction. Goldfarb reports that other researchers are working to refine cosmeses, custom-made artificial skin meant to match the appearance of an amputee's remaining arm, so the artificial arm is capable of dispersing the exhaust vapor the way a real limb would exhaust sweat. Goldfarb is already making improvements. A more refined model under development has 14 actuators in a smaller space than the current version, which has nine. 
Meanwhile, he and his students are fine-tuning the software that makes the current rocket arm a blast and developing an artificial leg using the same propulsion technique. For IEEE Spectrum, I'm Willie D. Jones.